Good morning all, it's post bag. Now, just before I start opening these, I just want to say uh, a quick word about Patreon. Uh, so this is me on Patreon. Julian Eilert is creating post bag videos. And I just want to say a massive thanks to my patrons for supporting me on this. Uh, one thing I will say about this is that the money that comes in from Patreon will only go towards post bag videos. I won't uh, just put it into the general pot. It'll go specifically via PayPal, through eBay, and uh, purchase the items in dollars directly from China, which uh, means that the flow of little yellow envelopes can continue. Uh, today's envelopes appear to be all gray, but uh, yes, thank you very much to all the patrons. And I'll put a link to my Patreon page uh, right at the top of the description in this post bag and in all future post bags. Right, let's start uh, with this one. There's no description on here. I know what it is because I can feel it. Uh, there are some wires running down there, so I've got to be a bit careful I don't cut those. So let's cut it there. And in here, not very well protected, is a Cobb LED strip. Yeah, so this is a, a 170 millimeter long Cobb LED strip. You can see the LEDs in there. Uh, they appear to be in pairs. Now this is uh, shown on the eBay listing as a 12 volt strip. The point is though, where's the current regulation? Uh, can I connect this directly to 12 volts? I think I'm going to have to. One question has been answered already and that is can they be daisy chained? And yes they can because the pos and neg connections have little uh, gold pads which can be soldered on there so I can uh, daisy chain these in a long line. Uh, let's just do a tentative power up with 9 volts, just see what happens. Oh, that's interesting, that's crackling. Why is that crackling? Uh, well, maybe it's not crackling, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just hearing the rattling of the thing on the bench, but certainly it's not lighting up with 9 volts. Uh, I'm not sure how they're doing this. I'm just going to go through a few theories. There don't appear to be any resistors. There's no chips. Uh, the only thing I can think is that maybe they're putting four of these LEDs in series uh, to get the 12 volt compatibility. But before I stick 12 volts on it, I think we should look at the eBay listing. Uh, so this is it. It's a super bright 17 centimeter, 5 watt, 84 Cobb LED lamp strip light bulb, 12 volts. Uh, white for home or car use. Now, if it's for car use, it should be good for 12 volts and up to about 14 and a half volts. Uh, this came from Heaven Stores. And uh, one of the reasons I got it was it was just very cheap. $1.89. That's not much more than about a pound free shipping. Right, well, let's just go for it and get up to this 12 volt battery. In fact, if I trap that wire in there. And just flick it on the oh yes that works that's actually not very bright i'm pretty convinced that these leds are in little groups of four in series and they're under driving them a bit they're not running them at full power and uh, also that would mean of course that there's no current limiting on this it's just relying on the fact that uh, 12 volts and sort of 14 and a half well, actually, if they're about 3.6 each, what's that, 7.2? Yeah, it's about 14.4, isn't it? Uh, they might be less than 3.6 volts drop. That's just starting to warm up now. But yeah, they're not massively bright. But then, I don't know, maybe that's quite a good thing. Now, 5 watts at 12 volts should be, what, about 400 milliamps? And in fact, they're only drawing uh, 260 milliamps. So let's do a quick calculation. Uh, 12 times 0.26 is 3.12 watts, so just over 3 watts. So not 5 watts at 12 volts, maybe they uh, will be 5 watts at 14.4 volts. Well now it's quite sunny today and we've actually got 13.8 volts on the solar power system. So let's plug that into this strip. And uh, yeah, that does seem noticeably brighter. It's probably hard to tell on camera. That'll probably get warmer as well. The issue of heat is um, 
really one I'm thinking about from the point of view of putting these in as under cabinet lights in the kitchen. That's one of the intended uses of this. I mean, otherwise it's just going to be for general sort of 12 volt DC lighting applications. Yeah, now that's starting to get actually quite hot um, with 13.2 volts. That's dropped to on my uh, meter. Yeah, that's got to the point now where that's, well, it's almost too hot to touch. It is pretty hot. So I was thinking of using these to replace my under cabinet lights in the kitchen, which on this side at least have just failed miserably. There's just um, a few there left working right in the middle. I'm not sure whether I just bought a, a bad batch of uh, strips, but these have just completely failed. It's just slightly come adrift there as well. On uh, this side, things aren't quite so bad, but we've still got quite a high failure rate of uh, individual LEDs and little LED clusters. Now, I'm not sure whether this is all just down to uh, the fact that these are regularly steamed by the kettle, and on the other side, they're regularly steamed by the uh, rice cooker. But uh, I'm starting to think now, because this cob LED strip gets so hot, I'm not sure how effective it's going to be uh, as a replacement for these strips. Uh, one of the issues with these strips is they're not very bright and I needed two rows. With the cob LED strip, I'd only need one row, but the temperature thing is a problem. Probably that would have to be mounted on uh, a metal bar, and then the metal bar possibly screwed to the underside of the cupboard. But you don't really want heat accumulating too much under there. Uh, so I've actually got 14.3 on the solar system now because it's a very clear sky today and the sun's out and obviously hitting the panels. Let's try this cob strip at 14.3 volts. And uh, yes, it's quite bright. It's hard to tell whether that's any brighter than 12 volts. Actually, probably the easiest way to test this would be to go out into the car, plug it into the cigarette lighter adapter and then start the engine. Perhaps I'll try that. Right, that's plugged into my car uh, 12 volt adapter, so let's start the engine. And yes, that's a lot brighter, I think, with the engine running. Let's stop the engine. Yeah, and that goes quite a bit dimmer. So yeah, definitely there's no current limiting there. I think it's four LEDs in series. Uh, so certainly good value, I think, $1.89 for this uh, 17 centimeter strip of, uh, well, it's 84 LEDs, although they look like they're in groups of four. Um, but it does get quite warm at 12 volts, it gets very hot at uh, 14 volts. And I think the major problem with this would be mounting. Uh, how do you mount it in such a way that you can dissipate that heat? You'd probably have to have some sort of clip arrangement that holds it down onto a metal bar with clips. Uh, so yeah, cheap, but possibly a bit impractical. Right, next we have a DC module. Let's have a look at the DC module. Uh, I'll just unwrap that. Well, this is certainly uh, very well wrapped, lots of thick bubble wrap, uh, static bag and a manual. And this is a buck converter, another buck converter. So yes, I saw this on eBay. I liked the look of it. Um, it's got two displays. One is for voltage, one is for current. And you'll notice that there are no potentiometers. So the voltage and current uh, limit settings are actually set with these buttons. So it's gonna have some sort of user interface, very much like the B3603. Uh, so yes, this is a, a programmable uh, voltage and current regulator board step down. Now the B3603 uh, has four buttons, very similar to this. In fact, they have very similar functions. This is plus minus, also in and out, set and on off. This one is uh, set, up, down and okay. So I'm hoping they'll have a very similar user interface. The advantage with this one, and incidentally this one is uh, a drock unit. The advantage with this one is it's got separate uh, voltage and current displays. So it should be a bit easier to use. On this one here, the only way you could tell whether it was uh, voltage or current is because the decimal point would come on uh, there for amps and in that position for volts. A little bit tricky to use, but this is an excellent unit. 
hopefully this will be even more excellent. So the first thing I want to know is input voltage range and there it is 5 to 32 so I'm completely happy to plug in my 12 volts into the input. Oh, that's nice so we've got volts in blue and amps in red. Uh, now I've got to work out what pressing the plus and minus buttons do. Ah okay so that's telling me the input voltage is 13.4 yeah that correlates with my little display up on the uh, uh, on the windowsill. Uh, where's out? That's out. Output voltage is zero. Maybe that's because it's not switched on. Yeah, that is indeed the case. So the output voltage is curiously set to eight volts, and that's the output voltage on/off switch. Yeah, I like that. Now, without reading the manual, uh, I've worked out that if you press set, it flashes this digit. Uh, which I presume I can go up and down with. Uh, then again, this digit, and again, this digit for amps. Then we go to volts uh, and go through the three digits for that, and it cycles round. I don't know how you get out of set. Press and hold, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to read the manual. Right, yes, it says when the setup is complete, press the off on button to determine the set data. Okay, that's good. At the same time, the system will save the set data to the chip's internal memory. It will also retain the set data when power up again. Good. So in set mode, if I want to change it to, say, 5 volts output, I simply go to that digit, uh, press minus, and 5 volts on off sets that data. And in some ways, that's a little bit better than this, because here you just had to increment and decrement and uh, hold the button down and it can take some time to uh, to get this to the voltage you want. This one you can set um, either in volts or tenths of volts or hundreds of volts. Yeah I quite like that. So if I want to set the current say to 500 milliamps then uh, I don't want that digit. I want that one set to 5 and that digit set to 0. So 0.5 amps on off to set that into the memory. And then if I switch on the output, I'll get 5 volts, and it should current limit at half an amp. Good. Now, there are a couple of uh, notable differences between these two units. Uh, the drop one says input voltage range 5 to 32, not to over 32, or it will be damaged. Uh, the B3603 has an input voltage range of 6 to 40, so it goes a bit higher on the input. Uh, the chips are different. This is an LM... LM2596 and this is an XL Semi uh, XL4005. So let's put a load on here and um, I've actually put the Cobb LED strip on here. I've got 13.4 volts going in so I should have enough to put 12 volts into there. Um, out is currently 5 so let's go into set mode. I don't want to set the current. Actually, I probably do want to set the current, but anyway, um, I won't worry about that for the moment. So let's set this to, ah, now how do I set it to 12? Let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, it moves the decimal point, that's fine. Oop, 20, I don't want 20. So that's interesting, I have to go around again. Oh, it's locked out. Why is that? Perhaps if I switch it off. Set. Uh... Right, so now this is 10, the decimal point's in a different place. So I want that digit, plus plus to, tw uh, plus to 12. That must have contact bounce. On off to set. That also switches it on. But anyway, that's uh, got it set to 12 volts on the output. I can now measure the current, uh, 250 milliamps. I think that's about what I measured before, 260 I think I was measuring on my DVM. So yeah, that's good. And this is particularly good if you need to see voltage and current at the same time on separate displays. Yeah, I like that. Uh, let's just try current limiting it. So set, uh, that was 260 milliamps, wasn't it? So let's go to the 500, take it down to 100 milliamps. Now it doesn't actually action it until you press on off. And yes, that's dimmed down. So that's gone to... 100 milliamps. Can I set it with the output off? Yes, I can. So let's set it to say 180 milliamps. Set. 
and then switch on. So it seems you can set this whether the output is on or off and that's pretty good. So uh, this device is uh, a DC buck converter, 5 to 22 DC in, 0 to 30 out, 5 amps, 30 watts, adjustable voltage regulator adapter. Uh, this was $11.50 free shipping. Now this came from Iawu. Um, Iawu often does these uh, DC converter products. They're often a little bit more expensive. They do tend to get the stuff first. Um, so I might be paying a slight price premium here. It's possible that when these uh, hit the other sellers that the price will come down a fair bit. And so this mixture of stuff constitutes today's post bag. Cheerio!